Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I'm taking apart a microwave transceiver. This transceiver was recently gifted to me um, as just a piece of junk that was laying around, and in due course, as kind of the standard way that I spend my evening, I decided I would take it to bits. So I've been taking it apart and kind of admiring the sexy microwave sexiness of the whole thing. So this here in the background, this is the actual chassis of it. Um, this this bowl right here is the actual dish, and the the hole right here is where the feed feed point came up, um, as as the feed horn that then would reflect off of it and then direct forward. Um, bunch of ver various boards and stuff, but where the real sexiness really sh displays itself is in the actual feed horn itself, right? So um, this is where the bowl, the actual dish, is mounted. And this is a single piece of waveguide. And so it's a little hollow rectangle that goes up and tapers to a opening to this little metal disc that's actually literally just cocked there. And that's the reflector to cause the signal to come up the waveguide, bounce off of it, down onto the, you know, onto the dish like that, and direct forward. This down here is the transmitter and the re the first receive stage of this transceiver. But what's super cool here is that it doesn't have any sort of transmit receive circuit uh, like relay or anything. It actually has a circulator. All right, I've I've presented before on what a circulator is. It's essentially a one-way valve. Is RF energy can go in one way and comes out on the second port, but RF energy that comes on the second port doesn't come back to the first port but goes to the third port, right? And so that's why it's got a little arrow in a circle and is called a circulator, right? And so this this side right here is the transmitter. So all the transmit energy goes in the circulator and redirects out through the feed horn, right? Out to the out to there. And any received energy coming in through the feed horn gets redirected over here to the receiver. Right? If we take the waveguide off here just to kind of show you what we're talking about. <laughs> One screw off. Probably pretty. There we go. So here's the waveguide. And here we're looking into the circulator, right? Um, this cap this rectangular cavity is actual is the actual you know, feed line that the RF passes through. Um, based on the size of it, is it uh, 0.26 inches wide and 0.14 inches tall? Um, I believe that this transceiver is for something between 26 gigahertz and 40 gigahertz. So stupid high, right? Um, this circuit board here is the uh, connector for the transmitter. So you've got couple uh, power lines here and one RF um, coax. So this would be some sort of modulated carrier at something relatively low in the, you know, tens of megahertz or baseband even or something. And what it does is it goes through some circuitry into this part right here, this, which is a gun diode oscillator. So a gun diode is a N type semiconductor diode that when put in a resonant cavity oscillates at a specific frequency. Uh, this this copper tube right here has a uh, ferrite slug inside of it that you can then screw in or out to change the exact size of this cavity to change the oscillation of it. Oscillation, sorry. Um, this little red wire that comes to this feed through capacitor, um, this is a five volt power source that is, excites the diode and causes it to oscillate. And I think that how this modulate, how this uh, gun diode gets modulated as the transmitter diode is the voltage on that is varied very slightly to cause it to FM or frequency modulate, I think. Um, what's also kind of cool, if you look right in there, you'll notice that there is a little um, TO92 by uh, transistor in there, and I think that's actually used for temperature compensation. It's milled right into the aluminum, and it comes out onto the circuit board 
here and is fed back through this connector and is sensing the temperature of this gun diode for temperature compensation. Right, so I think that this 5 volt uh, signal power supply right here for the gun diode makes it oscillate, which then goes through the circulator, out the feed horn and into the dish, and I think gun diodes put out something on the order of like tens of milliwatts. Um, so surprisingly low power, but then again, 26 gigahertz is pretty stupid high. Where the sexy sexiness of this circuit continues is on the receive side where RF power comes in through the feed horn and goes this way. Flipping it over, right, so here's the circulator and here is a bandpass filter, I believe, I'm guessing. But you'll notice it is a piece of waveguide, it's the copper part right there, with four screws. The screws are go into the waveguide and as you dial these screws in or out, it changes the pass characteristics of this piece of waveguide. This waveguide then goes into this cavity um, here, or I guess here-ish, which has on the back of it another gun diode strapped. Um, this gun diode, you'll notice, has a bunch of capacitors um, hanging off of its 5 volt rail because I think this one needs to be very stable. Um, this gun diode is at a very fixed frequency and is mixing somehow um, in this cavity after the bandpass filter and down converts the received signal to something in the you know megahertz range so that it can actually travel through just a normal piece of coax right so I think these are um, MCX connectors on the kind of the real cheap paper wrapped thin coax and from there goes down to a pair of um, circuit boards here, which is a, uh, what I think is pretty much just the whole receiver front end. So it starts here, goes through a couple of preamps, goes onto the second board. I think this is the actual detector, but I'm not really sure. But I just wanted to mainly just show you the sexy, sexy, sexiness of two gun diodes strapped onto a circulator going into a feed horn on Waveguide. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry if all of this was terribly wrong. Bye.